Welcome, welcome, good morning, evening, and to some people even afternoon. Today is Thursday, and what we have to talk about today in what I hope for once is going to be a brief video is a few news of the last few days, which I thought were quite interesting. So what we have on the plate for today are a dungeon nerf, a spec nerf, and news about 10.1 our incoming season two of Dragonflight. So let's, uh, let's start with the unfortunate spec nerf, because the unfortunate spec nerf is that Discipline Priest's expiation is no longer going to double dip from damage modifier, it's no longer going to crit, and it's no longer going to ignore damage reduction effects. So as I said, of course, it's unfortunate because it's not that Discipline is shining right now as you might have guessed especially by the not ignoring damage reduction effects this is due to a pvp nerf expiation is the talent which buffs by quite a bit the damage of your mind blast and shadow ward death and also sucks away sucks away three seconds of shadow ward pain to do instant damage whenever you do mind blast and shadow ward death even though you look at this from the total damage done of a discipline priest and you might wonder you know it's not that much expiation is quite weak but once you start adding on top of this the 20% more damage to Mind Blast, the 20% more damage to Shadow War Death, this already rises up to be 7-ish percent of your total damage. It is somewhat annoying that because of the power of this talent in PvP, it also gets punished in PvE. And it's going to amount to something around a 2-ish percent less healing done by the Discipline Priest. As I said, the correct definition for this is unfortunate, because it's not that Discipline Priest needed to be nerfed in their healing. Let's just hope, as I have some copium, that there will be some sort of compensation buffs coming soon, perhaps even in 10.0.7 in for Discipline. Now, next, next on the agenda is the nerf, this time to the dungeon. First, there is a hotfix. First, there is a tiny hotfix about Just Sharyu's shockwave in Court of Stars. As you know, that wasn't even a shockwave. It was some terribly looking particle effects on the ground, and you barely even saw where the shockwave was actually going to land. Luckily, this, this mini boss was completely harmless. It was basically just a, a slog to go through without very little to be afraid of, so it's not that important. What is more important is the nerf to Ruby Life Pulse. The nerf to Ruby Life Pulse lands on the second boss, Kokia Blazehoof, and the nerf in question is that now Inferno, the Ads Inferno, so not the Trash Mobs Inferno, the Inferno of the boss is going to do 35% less dot damage. Now, there has been some discussion about whether or not this is, was the correct type of nerf to give to Ruby Life Pools. Many players have been wondering about the last boss. When the last boss pushes out the triple Inferno cores on three different players, instead the nerf lands on the second boss. General consensus seems to be that this is going to make random pugging of uncoordinated groups a little bit easier. Because, you know, this boss requires some coordination in where do you move during this boss, where are you baiting the boulder, where are you spawning the ad. So now it is definitely trivializing way more of the fight than before. Ruby Life Pools is not exactly one of the easier dungeons nowadays. It's not also the hardest by any means, but it could have it could have had perhaps one nerf to the last boss more so than this one. We will see just exactly how easy the, the second boss of Ruby Life Pulse will be after this nerf to the Inferno Dot AOE. Lastly, we have on our agenda the news about 10.1 which, you know, it seems like we are putting our, our business a little bit ahead of ourselves because we haven't even gotten an official release date for 10.0.7 and we are already talking about 10.1. But as we said, we have 10.0.7 in the PTR for quite a few weeks. We got the post of the official content update for 10.0.7 from Blizzard a few days ago, which means the release date is quite 
close. We also know supposedly the patch is supposed to come out in spring. Spring is going to be in basically two weeks, a bit less than two weeks. So basically 10.0.7 is done. 10.0.7 is ready to be shipped to the live servers. So what's next to talk about is the big content patch, the big season coming after season one. And of course, on this point is the news that Blizzard has just pushed in their internal server patch version 10.1, precisely 10.1.0.48452. That is the build version of their incoming patch on their own little private server, which is also, in case you're wondering, encrypted. Encrypted meaning it cannot be data mined yet. So we seem to continue to be on the same path, on the same road of what we of what we talked about a few days ago about the timeline of patches for this game, which was supposed to be, which seemed to be somewhere in the realm of one patch every two months, right? The expansion is out at the end of November and at the end of January we get 10.0.5 and then at, at the end of March we get 10.0.7 and then at the end of May we get 10.1. That seems to be the timeline. Of course, what we also talked about back then was the danger of the fact that at the start of June there was going to be the release of Diablo 4. Therefore, some players were a little bit sad about the possibility of having to decide, basically, to split their time between trying out Diablo 4 and trying out the new season of Dragonflight. That would have been a little bit of a, of a waste, you know? That's why we were hoping perhaps 10.1 could have come out maybe in early May to give us a one month buffer before Diablo 4 comes out or maybe at the end of June or the start of July to also give us a one month buffer after the release of Diablo 4. What still, though, is important is that with this patch being pushed into their own internal servers, we should have what history has taught us about the patch releases of Blizzard is that once a patch hits their internal servers, it's going to be pushed into the PTR within a couple of weeks. And technically, we even have the possible chance, given what Morgan Day told us, that we're gonna get a double, a simultaneous PTR going on at the same time, 10.0.7 and 10.1 PTR builds up and playable at the same time, since apparently the PTR for 10.1, according to him, is in the plans to go live by the end of this week. 10.0.7 is going to come out as of the news of a few hours ago in just a couple of weeks. 10.0.7 has been announced for the 21st of March, which perfectly fits with the statement of Blizzard that 10.0.7 was going to come out in spring. Well, March the 21st is exactly the beginning of spring. That's going to be also the reset or the reset after is going to be when 10.1 is going to start hitting the PTR. And that's when we will start getting the data mining and getting the news about the balancing of said dungeons, the changes to said dungeons, as well as what's going to be the new raid of season two, what are going to be the new systems, the new mechanics added to season two. Perhaps maybe Blizzard is thinking about some some borrowed powers to add to season two. What about the new tier sets, the new tier set bonuses to be added to season two, etc., etc., etc. That is the important important part of the news that 10.1 is now up on their own internal servers. The, the ringing of the bell of the incoming content to be talking about when it comes to the next season of Dragonflight. So these were our three main points to be talked about in today's agenda. I believe we were able for once to keep the duration of this video to somewhat of a short, quick and fast way to deliver some news. So I'm pretty satisfied about that. With my satisfaction being done with, we can leave each other on this Thursday. We will start by saying our goodbyes and thanking, of course, all of my Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of this channel. Contribution and help can still come in three ways. Like and commenting down below on this video, as well as subscribing to the channel itself are good ways. We also have ways such as following me over on Twitter, as well as following me over on my stream on Twitch. Twitch, those are also helpful ways. 
Now, with these social and pleasantries out of the way, we are now leaving each other. Thank you guys again for watching. See you guys soon, which is going to be likely tomorrow. And in the meantime, ah, finally, finally, we plan for a video to be somewhat short and concise, and we managed to do it just fine.